Brother Roop here. We're in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 37. If you're my subscriber, thank you very much. I'm honored and privileged. And uh, if you like these short videos, five minutes long, uh, go ahead and subscribe to ring the bell. So we are in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 37. It's a long verse, a lot in there. It is the whammy verse, or the gotcha verse for Paul. <laughs> One of my favorite verses. Uh, he's going to... He's, he's going to scare these people, shock them. He's going to scare them. Uh, he, he's, he's already got it planned out. Paul's not a fool. Paul's a smart guy. He's going to, <laughs> he's going to have a little fun with it. And they deserve it. So let's read the verse. Uh, let's see. Verse 37. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now... Do they thrust us out privately? Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. Oh, here we go. Paul's got them now. Paul's talking to the, the Roman prisoner, or prison, prison warden, who he just converted to Christianity. But the magistrates and the rod bearers who are wanting to let Paul out, Paul and Silas out of prison, uh... Because they're scared. They thought they, uh, by their powers, caused the earthquake. And uh, Paul is uh, going to hold them to account. Yeah. Because they scourged a Roman citizen. Paul, the Apostle Paul, is a Roman citizen. It is against the law to scourge a Roman, prison, a Roman citizen. Roman citizens were protected against degrading forms of punishment like flogging, scourging, whipping, and crucifixion. Uh, the island of Rhodes was deprived of its freedom for crucifying Roman citizens. Also, you can look at uh, verses 22 and 25, or chapter 22, verse 25, excuse me. Uh, it also deals with the same issue. So the ro magistrates want to let Paul and, and Silas out because they got scared because uh, the earthquake happened. They thought Paul and Silas had, had something to do with it, and they did because they were praying and worshiping God at midnight, and God heard their calls for prayer, so they actually did. And so... and. They want to quietly let Paul go free. Hmm. No, 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 no. So, other other aggravating circumstances mentioned the uh, the scourging. Uh, here, here the Roman the uh, King James says beaten us. That's what the King James says, but. The Aramaic says they scourged him. Scourge. Now, scourging and beating two different things. So I just want to point that out. Uh, and they did it openly uncondemned. Yeah. See, Roman citizens had to be treated with utmost respect because only half the, pop, half the population of Rome was slaves. They were enslaved. So... The percentage of Roman citizens was far smaller than that. So probably, just take an educated guess, I'd say only about 20% of the population of the Roman Empire were actually Roman citizens. So here's Paul's complaints. Here's, here's Paul's complaints. Um, I believe there's three. One, number one, they had been beaten or scourged contrary to Roman laws. Number two, that they had been public, publicly disgraced in the presence of the people. And the reparation ought to be as public. Three, that he had been done without a trial 
and while they were uncondemned. And therefore the magistrates ought themselves to come and release them, and thus public acknowledge their error. Paul knew the privileges of a Roman citizen, and at proper times, when the interests of justice and religion required it, he did not hesitate to assert them. In all this, he understood and accorded with the Roman laws. The Valerian law declared that if a citizen appealed to the magistrate to the people, it should not be lawful for the magistrate to beat him with rods or to behead him. Cicero says that the body of every Roman citizen was inviolable. The porcelain law, he adds, has removed the rod from the body of every Roman citizen. And in his celebrated oratory against Verres, he says, a Roman citizen was beaten with rods in the forum. O oh, judges, where, in the meantime, no groan, no other voice of this happy man were heard except the cry, I am a Roman citizen. Take away this hope. He adds, take away the defense from the Roman citizens. Let there be no protection in the cry, I am a Roman citizen. And the praetor can with impunity inflict any punishment on him who declares himself a citizen of Rome. So, being Romans, hmm. Being Romans, being Romans are having the privilege of Roman citizens. They were both they were born Jews, but they claimed that they were Roman citizens and had a right to the privileges of citizenship. On the grounds of this claim and the reason why Paul claimed to be a Roman citizen. So the release, the release should be as public as the unjust act of imprisonment. Uh, as they have publicly attempted to disgrace us so they should as publicly acquit us. This was a matter of mere justice, and as it was of great importance to their character and success. They insisted on it. It was proper that they should be required to do this. Uh, five things, five things. One, because they had been illegally imprisoned, and the injustice of the magistrates should be acknowledged. Two, because the Roman laws had been violated and the majesty of the Roman people insulted and honor should be done to the laws. Three, because injustice had been done to Paul and Silas and they had a right to demand just treatment and protection. Four, because such a public act on the part of the magistrates would strengthen the young converts and show them that the apostles were not guilty of a violation of the laws. Five, it would tend to honor and to furtherance the religion. It would be a public acknowledgement of their innocence and would go far towards leading them to sanction of the laws as religious teachers. So, we may learn from this. Uh, let's see. We may learn from this two things. Two things. That though Christianity requires meekness in the reception of injuries, yet that there are occasions in which Christians may insist on their rights according to the laws. And number two, that this is the... This is to be done particularly where the honor of the religion is concerned and where it is the gospel will be promoted. A Christian may bear much as a man in a private capacity and may submit without any effort to seek reparation. But where the honor of the gospel is concerned, where submission without any effect to obtain justice might be followed by disgrace to the cause of religion a higher obligation may require him to seek a vindication of his character. 
and to claim the protection of the laws. His name and character and influence belong to the church. The laws are designed as a protection to the injured name or a violated property in his rights and of endangered life. And when that protection can be had only by appeal to the laws, such an appeal, as in the case of Paul and Silas, is neither vindictive nor improper. My private interest may be, I may sacrifice if I choose. My public name and character and principles belong to the church and the world, and the laws, if necessary, may be called in for their protection. So, Paul, knowing he's wrong, and probably knew if he was wrong from the very beginning, uh, now insists that his rights should be upheld. And um, as we're going to see in the next video, in the next verse, it's going to scare the pejeebers out of him because the Roman government, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, took the sanctity of the Roman citizenship uh, uh, very, very, had very, very high standards for it. And that's mainly because half the population were slaves. If you openly whip and scourge a Roman citizen publicly in front of a bunch of slaves, they're going to lose respect for Roman citizenship and they may choose to rebel. They may choose not to go to work. They may choose to be free, which is something that the Roman government had based their entire economy on slave, slave labor. So they had standards that uphold for economic reasons as, as well as uh, 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 reasons of pride. Anyway, thank you. God bless you. Any comments, go ahead and put it in the comment section, and we'll see, uh, see how the magistrates react in the next verse. Thank you, and God bless you.